just the turnaround to get to our campsites. A bit of a problem. Whoa, hang tight. Trees, remember the power line. I gonna hit it? This is really bad. Whoa, 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 whoa. And that's why you never ever listen to anyone but your travel partner. I try to stop the truck slides. Good morning, y'all. It's a little early this Sunday morning. It's about seven o'clock. It's travel day. We're headed to New York today. And I realized when I got up this morning, <laughs> driving back from Philly yesterday, I completely forgot to fill up the truck. So I'm gonna head to Wawa and fill up, dump some trash off, come back and get ready to go. We got time on our side. Let's go to Wawa. When I stayed on home, I need you on my fire. I want you to know that every time you're away, I long for you so much I can find my way. So we're going to get back to the house, start getting things set up to go. Wanted to get fuel. A lot of people ask in the comments, how do we manage fuel with the gas truck? I know the diesel trucks go through the big diesel lanes and it makes things easier. And they don't have the kind of problems that we do getting in and out of tight places. So step one to that is always fill up before we go, which I almost forgot. Step two, I try to hit exits with multiple fuel stations in it. So if I get to one that's kind of full, I can just move on to another one. It doesn't always help me find the best prices, but it seems to be the safest bet. So let's go back. Let's get this camper ready to go because we're going to New York today. Well, we got something strong. And I saw you walking the line. And the truth may come as a I did want to mention, some of you mentioned in the comments, when I stopped to get an easy pass on our trip into Pennsylvania, that the I-Pass actually covers all the way out. Well, I was mistaken, and in fairness, I didn't actually check, but I was mistaken to think that the I-Pass was only for Illinois. I-Pass was up here on the dash, and I ended up getting nailed on tolls twice, so that cost me about 40 bucks that I wasn't, uh, it cost me about 40 bucks that I wasn't planning on spending and definitely didn't want to give away to the Pennsylvania toll roads, but I did, so lesson learned. But we're current enough on our time. If you guys hadn't sent the comments, it would have been a whole lot more it, it than that. It would have happened every day for an entire week because pretty much anywhere we went around our campground, we jumped on the toll road, so. Yeah, very expensive mistake. After we got those comments, we did go back and double check and sure enough, our I-Pass had got hit on all the same tolls our Easy Pass did. So we took that out of the truck, wrapped it up in aluminum foil and stuck it in the drawer. So if anybody has a creative way to get your money back from iPass, because I still have, I think about $30 on there prepaid that I'd like to get back. If not, we'll run the Easy Pass till it gets low, wrap it in foil and throw it in the trailer. But uh, thank you guys for the comments. That definitely saved us some cash. Yeah. Hold the phone. We just got in a very dangerous and a very scary situation. Let's recap. Um, this is a big campground. We are gonna have to turn around. Where? And go that way. And I said, well, how are you, how do you expect me to do that? And she's like, well, cause that truck's in the way, you can't do that. She said, you can go down here. Okay. And there's a little field. She's like, you can just use the field and do a U-turn. Okay. Um, they had someone hit a water pipe this morning. Mm -hmm. So pressure could be iffy, but if all else, we'll just fill up our tank and use that. The turnaround is gonna be 
okay. the tricky part. So mistake number one, miscommunication with the staff. Instead of walking the area that they told us to, to go and confirming, I trusted that the information was correct. Her first suggestion was drive down just a little ways and turn around in this tent area. There's no sights there right now. Worst case scenario, keep going. It all loops around. So I thought, well, hey, that's a great option. Looking at it, there's a gravel driveway there. I thought I can pull past it back into the gravel driveway and come out no problem. Just the turnaround to get to our campsites, a bit of a problem. We're a little uncomfortable going up this hill. We're not sure what the rest of this road looks like. So we're gonna, it's awfully muddy, but we're gonna try to back into this. The issue I ran into there is, is that the angle was a little bit too sharp. The grass was way too muddy. Angela was trying to tell me, and finally I saw it in the backup camera that I was backing off into a mud hole. Oh, hang tight. You've got a really big drop off right behind you, so you need to cut your tires, truck tires, pretty sharp. And we all know if you sink the tires on this trailer to the point the axles are on the ground, you're calling a wrecker, which I was trying to avoid. The other issue I ran into is on the driver's side of my truck as I was trying to cut and back around this. If I got too aggressive, I was going to drop the front tires of my truck off into a deep ditch, which again, you're calling a wrecker and potentially doing some damage. You got it. It's just really muddy through here. You may get stuck. Get in. So Cody called it and said, nope, call it. We'll do the loop. This is really bad. I'm not worried about the trees, I'm worried about that power line. Then I can clear it. Whoa, 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 whoa. No go. No go. This thing was getting steep pretty quick. We see pretty quick we're not going to clear a power line. So this is a stressful situation enough. So there's a lady that comes out and she's like, oh yeah, you got it, you got it, you got it. You what? No. We, we won't Here's clear the this power line. Oh, this is frustrating. But what she ended up doing was distracting us from what we were trying to do. Had I have broken the power line with the air conditioner? Best case scenario, we break a power line and there's a major outage at the campground and we upset a whole lot of people out here trying to have a good time. Worst case scenario, that person that's standing over there trying to help gets hit with a falling live power line and it becomes a life and death situation. And at that point, I just rolled the windows up, grabbed my walkie talkie and just listened to Ange. All right, let's just go real slow because I don't have good visibility either. I don't think we can make this cut, but if we could, it would be a good angle for us to get out. No, I want to back down the hill the way we came because I know we can make it. Okay. So as we're backing down this very steep hill, Cody starts sliding. Yeah. I got a problem. What's that? I try to stop the truck slides. So then I want to get clear of it. All right, take a peek to your driver's side, how close we are to this hill. Just okay. watch that close. Okay, keep on going. You've got room on your passenger. We kind of need to edge that side a little bit. And the incline was so steep, when I would go to apply the brakes, I would start to slide. Just a little bit, nothing crazy, but I thought, man, if I was in a, in a much lighter truck, that trailer would have drugged me off into the woods. So luckily the truck handled it well. I did go ahead and click it in four wheel drive just to give me a little bit more control in my steering, which also kept my turning radius. But that seemed like the safest way to just back up one or two feet at a time, stop, check your mirrors, talk to your travel partner. I love an audience. Do you think we can back into that road to the left? 
I think you can. You get pretty good clearance over here in front of it. I'm going to drag my bank jacks off. I think I can go straight up that hill and get out of here. Don't cut so hard. You're going to go, you're going to send your truck off the hill and we're going to cut this too sharp. Sorry about that. I'm just, when I try to stop, I slide a little bit. Start cutting. And I got grass all over here. I'm watching your passenger side. So as we start backing around the curve the same way that we came in, there's actually a driveway with an open campsite up the hill. Okay, you're looking really good. We do have a power line behind us, but we've got like 12 feet before we hit that. We're just gonna take it easy. I'm gonna hit it. This looks really good, really good. Doesn't though, I'm at too much of an angle, baby. Keep on, keep on coming back. We got room to come back. Yeah. And gave him enough angle to get out of the situation. Okay, you look good, but there's a huge ditch back here, but you've probably got 12 feet. What I'm worried about is as I try to swing out of here, am I gonna drop the trailer off in the ditch? Want me to check your front? Uh, watch the passenger side trailer tires. If you can get some things. Okay, we're out. Hallelujah. I think we're clear. We have we have a sliding fifth wheel hitch. I mean, I'd like to think we have all the tricks and the equipment we need to do those kind of things, but the bottom line is F350s don't turn that well. Problem was, is on my passenger side of the front of my truck, I had a sharp drop off in grass, and I know it's very wet here already because we've already tried some of this, and I knew that if I got my passenger side front tire sliding off that little bit of an embankment, I was gonna be in a world of hurt pretty quick. So I was literally working with just enough room to finagle this thing around and not drop the wheels off of the truck or the trailer on either side. So all in all, we made it safely. No damage as far as we can tell. We still were flustered when we got to the campsite. So the unlevel and the water issues and became a little more exasperated than maybe we would have handled before. <laughs> We didn't hide the fact that we were frustrated in the video. And that's why you never ever listen to anyone but your travel partner, ever. But the reality is this stuff happens. We just needed to get out of the situation safely. And I think she even accused you of like, oh, first time with the new camper. Yeah. It was just a bad situation that we shouldn't have been in because we got bad advice and we listened to bad advice. Yeah. Hold your foot on the brake, please. Done. I didn't see it drag, but there's a lot of mud on the jack, so I'm hoping that's just when we dipped into a mud hole. And that we didn't actually drag the jacks, which could be a problem when we put them down. So we're gonna watch it. The good news is we do have a beautiful view here. <laughs> that was really stressful. So we're gonna take a breath, make sure we're not, we're gonna get level, we're gonna get settled we're gonna make sure that we don't miss any steps because we're rattled. So we just used everything the Anderson blocks will give us and we're still probably about that far off level. I think this is as good as it gets. Let's auto level and call it home. Now that we're here and we're relaxed a little bit, the site's very nice. So we actually picked up these Motorola walkie talkies on Amazon, we'll put a link in the description. These are working out really great. We've already had to use them a couple times in a in a tight truck stop when we were stopping to get in fuel. Mm -hmm. And then I'll I'll say these were the lifesaver today because if I would have been relying on my cell phone or if she would have been relying on hers when the truck was sliding backwards, they could have turned nasty really quick. Cell phones have lag, have real-time communication, and you might get somewhere like when we went to Yellowstone and you don't have cell phone reception. I do prefer the cell phone. Mm -hmm. I, I really do like that method. And I like the fact that he can have it Bluetooth to his truck and not have his hands on a walkie talkie. Whatever works for you, whatever you feel the most comfortable with, we like having both. You know, you have to make sure that you're making the best decision for you, your family, your rig, and your situation. You gotta know what your truck can do, what your trailer can do. But if you do this long enough, you're going to run into a situation like this. It worked out. You did a great job um, staying mostly cool. 
uh, but you you navigated it really well. I think if everybody rewinds to the front of the video, they'll see that I wasn't cool. And that's why you never ever listen to anyone but your travel partner, ever. Don't ever listen to anyone that's not yourself, your mirrors, or your traveling partner. They will get you screwed up every single time. If I'd have had my head in the clouds, we'd have tore down a power line, if not worse. I was pretty- I said uh, mostly cool. <laughs> I, <laughs> do everything the opposite of the way we do it. Our jacks didn't act funny, so hopefully that means we didn't drag. And we're gonna push these slides out, take a breath, <laughs> and regroup. As always, thanks for joining us on this journey, this exciting journey. But we're here in New York and we're excited to explore it. So we'll see you guys next time. Love you guys. And we'll see you guys on the next journey. Bye guys.